a broom beer. A broom beer today. Video, welcome to it. Sour beer, it's a quick sour. That's what this video is about. It is a yeast correction. It's a bacteria that I wanna try. That's what this video is built around. I signed up for the Volts um, White Labs. They release these things every once in a while. And uh, you can sign up for it and they give you rare stuff or test stuff that they're working on or stuff that's gonna be released to the public later on. I signed this up to buy this yeast or this bacteria probably a year and a half ago. It is a cool one. It's called Lactobacillus pericolinoids. <laughs> uh, that is it there. Pericolinoidus. It's, I guess, used more for lambic stuff or uh, longer aged sour stuff. I think it is harvested from longer sours, from lambics, things like that. As far as I understand it, it is heterofermentative. And that means that um, it produces CO2 and alcohol uh, a little bit. Um, I'm using this for a, a quick sour method, heating it up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit for two days. See if it sours and see if it works. I do not know if this is capable of doing that or how well it is. Like I said, it seemed to be used more for the long age stuff. You know, probiotics, two row, I've used yogurt for the quick sour usually, and some commercial strains can do it well. And I figured why not? This is a good time to do it. Plus the claw hammer system is a great one because it can be held with the lid closed. I'll duct tape it closed for two days, two, three days until the pH gets to my three point whatever range I'm trying to go for, 3.5, 3.7. And I'll purge the top of CO2, seal it up, and should be good to go. Then I'll just keep it in the kettle, reheat it again, boil it, add the actual yeast I want to do it, and then I'll have a sour beer. I am going to split this up and do low quats for half of it. I picked low quats from our low quat tree probably six months ago. They've been in the freezer for that whole time. They should still be good to go. So the first thing I do, I'm going to do is not use distilled water. I'm going to use just from the from the uh, faucet with carbon filtered. It's full of pH is high. It's not a big deal. These quick sour beers, the water treatment isn't that vital and neither is your pH from what I found and what I've read and what I've heard. Also, I'm not going to do a boil. Apparently, you don't get any DMS doing it that way. Regardless, I've done probably six to seven raw ale beers with no boil without any DMS problems anyway. Let's go uh, to uh, pitching the yeast and uh, keeping, it keeping it hot for a few days. Keeping the wort hot, I should say. You know what I mean. Okay, so I'll, I let this sit and, and uh, for, for about 15 minutes, I'm going to get um, the pH to 4.5. To That'll help with... Anything wild getting in, and the, the 4.5 will also help uh, with head retention as well. And uh, I'm gonna take a pH reading right now and see where it's at. There it is. <laughs> Whoa, there it is. <laughs> there it is, 4.5. I used all the lactic acid I had left. Um, I don't even know how much was in this that was left. Probably a good 10 to 12 milliliters. I just kept pouring in there, stir it in, take a reading, stir it in, take a reading after about three times of doing that, I ended up getting to 4.5. But I'm glad I hit it, because I have no more lactic acid. Okay, I decided to cool this down, um, kind of wrap it away. It's cooled down 10 degrees in about 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes. I could let it sit for a while and do it naturally. Just want to get it done with, and um, so I'll, I'll just get a little ice and do the whole cooling down process really quick. First things first, I spill water on myself, ignore that, we're gonna keep going. Got this to 106 degrees, and I'm good with that. Uh, I ran out of ice, so it's probably as good as, good as it's gonna get. I'm running out of, of all sorts of things today. It looks like even on some of this stuff, they can still be enough, but I still make a starter for five gallons for sure. So again, for a commercial um, pitching of yeast, you generally don't need to probably purge with CO2. I'm just being extra careful here. Yeah, if you're doing like wild stuff, like using like two row or stuff like that, it'd do CO2 for sure. Definitely you don't want that bad stuff to get in. Okay, there it is. I'm, a, I'm gonna check on it in probably two days, maybe even three. Let's go to that right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I did pull up some more before. I did this whole thing here. 1044 is the gravity. We'll see, see where it's at afterward. We'll see if the gravity changed at all. All right, now let's go to two, three days from now. Three days later, let's see where we're at on the pH. So this is a lot of cool stuff to this system. Again, holding it for 100 degrees is is great for, you know, three days I did. Without an issue, it seems like. 
uh, and I can take it from the valve here to see where it's at without having to open the lid up. This weird white fluffy thing, it looks like a mushroom or mold. It could have just been what was stuck in the valve here. Maybe something grew in there. I will have to open this up now, regardless of what this is, and see if there's mold. So it is at only at 4.1. So it looks like it should have made a starter. That's where we're at here. So I'm going to open this up and see what it looks like. I think it's okay. I don't think that's mold. It does look weird, though. All right, let's throw it and see kind of what that stuff is. If that's mold or mushrooms, I don't know. I do not know what that is. I don't know if that's protein coagulation or some sort of sponge that grew. I've never seen this in my sour beer making before. Look at this. Um, it, <laughs> that's disgusting, whatever it is. It smells fine. I've heard of beer having like this ropey snot thing that can happen for long aging. That could be what that is. It just it seems too thick to me. Um, there's no mold on the surface. It's all underneath it. So I don't know. I'm going to keep going through with this. I'm going to let it go for one more day or uh, another day or two and see if anything happens. If it doesn't drop down, I'll just sour it with uh, two row. So yeah, let's, let's uh, go to the next step and see, see what I do here. Okay, it's been two days. Let's see how this looks. I don't know what this is. It's like, what's that thing that forms uh, for kombucha? Scoby or something like that? It looks like that. Let me show you how alien this is. I, I can't take that risk. I can't take the risk. Um, I, I'm just gonna dump this. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's something to do with the, the lack of the cells I got. I don't think it is. It doesn't look like mold to me, but it's definitely some like it's definitely fuzzy in parts. Uh, I am gonna take a pH reading anyway, just to see if it ever did drop, and go from there. Three point eight. I'm not gonna drink it. It does not smell bad at all. There's no mustiness. There's no odd rank mold smell, which I have had before doing this. Either way, the pH didn't drop at all, uh, or barely. So 3.8 is not it. It's been a week. There's weird stuff growing on it. I'm dumping this. But I will not be defeated. Let's try this again, shall we? Days happen. It's done. pH is 4.4. Put one ounce of grain split between two jugs, so 0.5 ounces in each jug. Purge it with CO2. I'm going to do a hot water bath this time. So I, I like the idea of holding it in the heat with this system. I think having two gallons only, or even four gallons, five gallons, too much headspace, I think could be a problem trying to do a kettle sour in this. I could be wrong though. If you just were to blast it with CO2 like every 12 hours, you might be able to get away with it. Maybe from the top, there's a hole at the top of the lid here. Uh, you might be able to, you know, put CO2, hook CO2 into it and just maybe keep some sort of rig where CO2 can just constantly bleed in or hold like you would for like a, uh, like a keg or something. Um, but I think the idea is trying to do a quick sour with the system. I'm gonna try this way. So let me show you what this looks like from over the top. I'm gonna hold it at 115. That is the range where you can get the best conversion with um, lactobacillus from two row. And Motha Funk has great resources about lactobacillus um, with two row and mill two row in particular. And that's the temperature they recommend holding it at. I think it's like 109 degrees to 120, somewhere in that range. And with two row, something that you're trying to get wild stuff out of, it's not cultured. Uh, oxygen is a big problem, can be a problem. That's where you get the bad, funky stuff. You also don't want any bad bacteria getting in. Anyway, I think this will work just great. And let's flash forward to uh, two days from now, maybe three, 
and uh, see where we're at, see where the pH is at. I finally got fermentation on one of them. This does happen when I do lactobacillus, um, or trying to get lactobacillus from the grains. I usually get other stuff, so it does create some carbonation. At least that's what I've noticed. So I'll, I'm gonna take a pH reading of it and uh, see where it's at. 3.3, .3. that's more like it. So I, that one's ready. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test the other one. But I'm gonna do a little lactic acid into the other one uh, and just combine them and uh, do a steep on it, split it up. One's gonna get, uh, I'll do regular, just a regular fermentation on it, like USO5 or something. Then one of, them, one of it's gonna get the, the fruit I was telling you about. All right, I'll take a gravity reading on this, see if anything's shifted around. It's showing 1050. I'm not sure if there was activity or, you know, I know refractometers can obviously read different with alcohol, but if there is no alcohol in this by miracle and it is 1050, then that's, that's pretty good starting gravity. I think it's better to use like pretendomyces or other strains, uh, or maybe, maybe a, a better pH tolerant strain. That's all I have though. I've used Yoso 5, I believe, once or twice before after quick souring, and it's been fine. This is the weirdest one I've done in a while, meaning it just didn't work out. It still sort of didn't work out at the end, but I made it happen with a little lactic acid and should have the rest of the, uh, the products ready to go uh, shortly. So what I'm gonna do next uh, for the next video is finish this up, add the fruit for one of them, and then uh, give it a taste test in the same video. Thanks for watching.